It's Woodstock. It's always Woodstock. Somewhere, sometime. On the morning of August 15th, we picked up our tickets and embraced the sea of humanity before us. What a scene! The vibe around the members' tent was like palpable. The people were with it, man. Extra primo. Out of sight, dude! Every one of us was ready to kiss off these dumb bag laws and stick it to the man. We were gonna roll fat joints and blow the smoke out Biff Elwood's ass. I had a boss time. So did Joe. He just blows things out of proportion. Because sometimes, you know, proportion can be kind of dumb. I just parked Arlo Guthrie's microbus. We're about to go backstage and snort some watermelon with him. Can you dig it? Careful of the seeds. When you hear the name Woodstock, what does that mean to you? I discovered Jimi Hendrix by accident when I was 16, and it led to all this. Man, what are you here for this evening? Music, fun, good times, good vibes, all that stuff. And maybe some frisking at the metal detectors? If necessary, yes. <laughs> Living my 50 year ago moment. You were here 50 years ago? Yes, sir. My dad drove me here and dropped me off, and he went up to the medical tent, and I went with my girlfriend, smoked a joint, and watched the show. That's beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. I hope you have a good night tonight. I really Thank do. You. We'll see you on the lawn. Maybe yeah. we can snort some watermelon or something. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be I'll be hanging with Arlo. All right. <laughs> See ya. See ya. The August 15th show was sold as a concert by Arlo Guthrie, followed by a rescreening of the Woodstock documentary. Both gigs happening on the original 1969 field. But as people checked in, they were told there has been a slight change of plans. The concert's right on the lawn here today, and then your movie afterwards will be down in the pavilion. Oh, okay. Enjoy. Peace and love. Yes. Okay, so all that effectively means for fans is the Woodstock film being shown here in the pavilion and the Guthrie concert being staged here on the area known as the Great Law. The explanation for the shift that the award put down to, and I quote, the possibility of inclement weather, which makes sense. Why it doesn't make sense is why both events were shifted to the pavilion. You can see if the heavens opened up, Lord have mercy, the Great Lawn area completely exposed. One other point, the Guthrie concert stage is set up facing this direction, meaning fans will be facing that direction. Effectively, with their backs to the famous field, so many a journey to celebrate. Now, I'm not here to speculate, but I will say, if you don't think that is a big deal, I'll miss you like an idiot misses the point. We live in a hyper-commodified world because the counterculture lost. Bethel Woods owns the grass now. On the afternoon before his gig, the son of Woody Guthrie, America's greatest balladeer, snuck down to the field in a golf cart and spoke about his Woodstock experience. Who are you guys? <laughs> I thought I'd come down here and at least play one song on the original spot. We said that we would be back at the original site, which is right where we're standing. People like to go where something happened. And that certainly is true here. And a lot of fabulous things, I thought, happened during those years, in, in the 60s. And admit that the waters around you have grown. The Woodstock Festival was a celebratory end of an era. It's not the beginning of anything. It was, the, it was the end of something. And it was the end of a very turbulent time that was also very wonderful. Times no egg on my face this time. I'm happy to introduce Mr. Arlo Guthrie. I sort of remember this. <laughs> That's a game here. Your name? 
Farmer's Cat. Yeah. Peace and love from 17B. Oh, yeah. We were hoping to be able to build the stage back where it originally was, way down that way. And, uh, but I guess they didn't have enough juice down there or something. Well, I don't know what the story was, but either way, we are happy to be somewhere near it. And, uh, and just celebrate the fact that we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. But the PA wasn't very loud. I can't make it louder. I'm just the guy playing the music. Bruce, can you make it any louder? Or is that... yeah. we're, we're, Arlo, we're ever the consummate the performer, of course, I made a joke about it. At this point in life, most people out here need hearing aids to begin with. The sound engineers would have been told to keep it below 85 dB. Safe, sensible, non-offensive. Those kind of songs were popular about a hundred years ago. And sometimes I don't know, did I really see them, or did I see the movie so much, or, but certain performances I do remember, but I remember Arlo, because everything was so quiet, um, it was really beautiful. I think got better over the years. Hard to imagine. Uh, it may not may not be better now, but it did get better for a while. And so I thought we'd try this song here tonight. For him. I was having a groovy time, but I was wondering, what exactly were we celebrating? The greatest symbol of the counterculture, the field, turned into a museum exhibit. Arlo Guthrie performing in that museum, like Bam from the field. He himself played a part in shaping the legacy of... I got a feeling they might be coming around again. Does anything say something is dead, gone, and beyond memory any better than a museum? No the money. establishment could not say fuck you hippie any louder if they tried. Good night.
That summer that I went to the Newport Folk Festival, that was 67, that was July of 67. I was wandering around by myself, and I was, there was this kid sitting under a tree. Who was this guy? Oh, it's, it's Woody Guthrie's son. So it was Arlo Guthrie, and he was sort of kind of introducing, he was the workshop for this thing he was calling Alice's Restaurant Massacre. And the song was based, he said, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, be recording on an album, so look for it sometime. So within a year, it would be like the biggest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. He was very funny, he was very charming. I wouldn't be in your house. Because I went walking that ripping of highway. I saw a thing, and in the skyway, I saw the love of a golden valley. This land was made for you and me. Nah, it ain't our land. You know what? You won't find the children Woody inspired living in any museum. And you won't find their kids living under glass. They're scattered every place, choking on the same shit sandwich America's been choking on since the 60s. Yeah, look, there, there was hippies at Arlo's show. But like 1969, not as many as we'd like. Thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. Good to see you.